Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, where you can get a Windows 10 serial key for only $17. And by using my discount code, you get a 20% off discount, making it even less $14. After the payment, you'll receive the serial key, and to activate it, just go to your Windows settings and introduce that same key. And voila! You have an activated system for only $14. Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and I'm really happy to bring you a new video today and even more because it is a CPU comparison. <laughs> well, today's CPU comparison is between Ryzen 5 3600 and the Core i5 10600K. In this case, the case is, a, is of the 10400F, but well, it serves as an example, of course. So as usual, these tests focus on 1080p, 1440p and 4K results, usually at medium settings. This in order to, at least at 1080p, avoid the GPU bottleneck. So we kind of have uh, interesting results in terms of CPU. You can't actually test the CPU if you are bottlenecking it with the GPU, unless you are with a lot of frame rates, let's say 300 plus or 500 plus, okay? So, hence the medium settings. Both CPUs will be tested with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM with my RX 5700 XT overclocked and undervolted and Ryzen 5 3600 is at stock and 4.3 gigahertz static overclock and the i5 10600K is at stock and 5 gigahertz static overclock. But yeah, before anything, no, this video is not being made to make Intel look better or AMD is the underdog or blah 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 blah. We currently have more than 100 or let's say at least $100 difference. So it is, is it really worth to buy the 10600K or the Ryzen 5 3600 and take that um, and take those 100 bucks and actually buy a better GPU? That's what I want to show you in this video. And well guys, there's really not much more to say, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot. That really helps a lot, it really does. Um, so well, yeah, let's go to the part, let's, see you let's go to the part you really want to see, the benchmarks. See you soon. Well, here we have the first benchmark of today's video and it is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game is known to love to hold hands with the CPU and that can be seen in the results. The Ryzen 5 3600 does fairly well actually, being within 10% of the i5 10600K. Still, once we overclock the i5 to 5GHz, which is actually easy, things change a lot and the i5 leaves the Ryzen 5 3600 in the dust. Overall, we can see that if you want to play the game at, let's say, 75Hz, Ryzen 5 3600 will be more than enough. But if you want to go over that, the 10600K will make you feel the difference.
In the second place we have Far Cry New Dawn with a game engine that loves single core performance. Here we kind of have the same scenario as before, Ryzen 5 3600 is once again within 10% of the 10600K's performance. But once we get the i5 to 5GHz it goes one league above. If we compare 1080p and 1440p results, the i5 10600K at 5GHz will have 17 average FPS more and most importantly 12 FPS more in the 1% lows, which will considerably improve the smoothness of the gameplay. Overall, another easy win to the i5 10600K. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? The third game tested is Remedy's Control, which, by the way, is an astonishing game. If you didn't play it, Play it now, because it is an astonishing game. This game is known to heavily rely on the GPU side of things, and the results confirm that. Both CPUs have virtually the same results with the i5-10600K at 5GHz, giving us around 1 FPS more at 1080p, which is less than 1% difference, in this case completely within the margin of error. Let's move on. Now with a heavily played title, Rainbow Six Siege. Well, I have to confess that I was expecting that the i5-10600K made the difference here, but we were already in the 300 plus FPS and the game was still maxing out the GPU side first. Which is actually great. In the side-by-side -side comparison we saw before, we can see that the i5 is getting a bit ahead, but in the end of the benchmark Ryzen 5 gets a bit of advantage. Balancing the results. Overall, excellent results for both CPUs. This time we have Ghost Recon Breakpoint using Vulcan and medium settings as usual. From what we can see Ryzen 5 3600 can push more than 167 average FPS in this case scenario, while the i5 will go as high as 175. But that isn't actually a big deal. The big deal is the difference in the 1% lows which go from 112 FPS with Ryzen 5 3600 to 131 FPS with the 10600K, and that will for sure affect the gameplay smoothness of people using 144Hz monitors, for example. What we can also see is that if you don't game at anything over 130 FPS, you will be completely fine with Ryzen 5 3600. Let's move on. So now we're presented with Red Dead Redemption 2, a game that everybody loves, and by everybody I mean exactly nothing since I'm not graduated in statistics. Now, as for the game results, they are given by the benchmark tool which is known to be quite misleading, at least in terms of the 1% lows. Still we can see the pattern in all resolutions. 
Both CPUs are presenting around the same average FPS, but when we look at the 1% lows we can actually see that the only difference is when we overclock the i5 to 5GHz. Otherwise, the results are virtually the same. The last gaming benchmark is World War Z, also using Vulkan API. In this game we see once again that both CPUs deliver virtually the same results, and that even at more than 150 FPS and no GPU bottleneck at 1080p, the i5 won't take the lead even at 5GHz. Which is interesting. Overall, both CPUs are performing exceptionally well in this game. So, yeah. Not much more to say. Moving on. Now let's finish with one of the well-known synthetic benchmarks, Cinebench R15. This is a good test to see the actual single and multi-core performance and as shown, at stock settings the i5 takes the lead in terms of single core performance but terribly loses in terms of multi-threading capability. Once we overclock the i5 10600 to 5GHz, things change a lot as it smashes the Ryzen 5 3600 in terms of single core performance, but interestingly enough, it still falls behind in terms of multi-threading results with the same core count and with the same thread count. This means that simultaneous multi-threading in the Ryzen chips is way more efficient than the hyper-threading in the Intel ones. Funny. Let's go to the conclusion. Spaghetti. So guys, concluding. Well, like usual, the i5 10600K is actually better, yes, and even more at 5 GHz, and I do tell, and I do tell you that overclocking that CPU to 5 GHz was really, really easy. I just ramped, uh, ramped the, the clock to 50, uh, the ring ratio to 48, um, voltage to 1.29, and it was rock solid. So I didn't need to do any anything more just those three settings and it was stable rock solid stable so it is quite easy and once overclocked to to 5 gigahertz sorry the i5 will take the lead in any possible game of course it costs 100 dollars more in general 100 dollars 100 euros more and if we actually take that money and buy a better gpu you will still have better results but if you play indeed CPU demanding games, or if you are aiming for a really, really high end build, you really want the 10600K because it is the better CPU performance wise, without a doubt. But well, like I said, yeah, like I said, it costs $100 more and with Ryzen 5 3600, you can actually get a better GPU and uh, have a better performance in the final build. Uh, for example, instead of getting uh, this, the 10600K and the RX 5600 XT, you can actually get um, the Ryzen 5 3600 and the RX 5700 XT, which makes quite a difference in terms of at least 1440p gaming and above. So, yeah, it is quite a trade, per se. Also, there is the memory frequency and timings, uh, because yes, obviously, the Ryzen 5 3600 can run way higher uh, frequencies. Usually I'm running at 37, 33 megahertz with really tight timings and sub timings. And yes, it does improve the performance quite a lot, uh, at least in terms of high FPS numbers. But let's not forget that the i5 10600K can actually run higher frequencies. For example, in on my width, with my 4400MHz CL90 RAM, 
it actually booted that way. I didn't even need it to, I didn't even need, sorry, to actually activate the XMP. It activated the XMP automatically uh, with my Gigabyte motherboard. So yeah, it can run and still have better results than the Ryzen 5 3600. Now, a thing that I actually found is that, uh, funny enough, the 10600K even overclocked to 5 gigahertz is is quite it's quite cooler than temperature wise of course runs quite cooler than the Ryzen 5 3600 overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. It does. Thank God. Uh, well, it consumes a lot more power, but temperature wise is way more efficient. It actually consumes a lot more power, a lot. So if you are if you are looking into power consumption, well, you can scratch the i5 and get the Ryzen 5 3600. But if you're looking at raw performance, i5 it is. But in terms of of temperature, in terms of temperature, the i5 is actually cooler. And I was using a thirty dollars a thirty dollars cooler, uh, and it was that cool. It was like around sixties, fifties, sixties most of the time. So pretty damn great for a 5 gigahertz chip that with a with an architecture that's still using 40 nanometers okay so basically is it worth the 100 dollars plus or not well it kind of depends uh in what you want because for example ryzen 5 if you want a really let's say if you want a really cheap build a cheaper build with better gpu performance the ryzen 5 3600 is without a doubt what you want to get because you get a cheaper CPU, you can also get you get a free cooler with it. Uh, it is not that great, but it is decent at least. And you get a, a cheap cooler, and you can actually you can actually put more money on the GPU and RAM side, and that will grant you better performance. As for the the i5 10600K, well, it costs one hundred dollars more, of course. So if you have a limited budget, you actually have to cut. Um, somewhere else, for example, in the case, in the PSU, uh, in the GPU, and those things, at least the GPU and um, the PSU, are actually more important. So, yeah, you have to cut if you have a limited budget. Uh, and you don't have a cooler, a stock cooler. So, yeah, it is quite, let's say, uh, it is quite a choice that people have to do. If you have a limited budget, the 10600K is what you want. If you want to, if you have a limited budget and want better performance overall, Ryzen 5 3600 is what you want. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share the video because that really helps a lot. Thanks a lot for watching. Seriously, the next CPU comparison video will be between the Ryzen 3 3100, Ryzen 5 3600, the i5 10400F, and the i5 10600K. Hope you enjoyed the video, let me know what you think about these results in the comment section and see you in the next one.